G'day everyone. This evening I've come down here to the Lower Ovens River doing some bait fishing for Murray Cod with my wife Loretta and we are using a very unique bait. Right now before I tell you about the bait that we're using in go fishing I've got a question for you. How many of you out there noticed this fishing lure right behind me. <laughs> it must have been there a long time. It's filthy dirty, which means it's had flood water running over it and it hasn't flooded for quite a while. That's a bit of a mystery. How has nobody noticed that before? Did you notice it? If you did, go to the top of the class because I'm going fishing. All right, we're just setting up and we're going to be using for bait chicken shit. We are using chicken shit for bait. Here it is. Chicken's hit. If that H and that S were a bit closer together and there wasn't a gap, that would be chicken shit. But it's chicken's hit. Complete chicken's hit. Because it's a complete angler bait that you can get from uh, Complete Angler in Wangaratta and Lavington and I think Wagga as well. Rightio, Cod. We're going to catch you with chicken shit tonight. This chicken's hit comes in these sort of, this sort of size. It's marinated in some uh, special secret herbs and spices. Fish pheromones. There's definitely a bit of aniseed in there, I think. Alright. And you just put it on the hook, whatever way you can. Any way you do. And you cast it out. And then you watch closely. Danger, danger. Hold on tight. As uh, one or two cockatoos fly over, I cast out my second line. I've got him! I've got one! I've finally caught a fish! And it's not a turtle! What have we got? It's got to be a Murray Cod, doesn't it? A bit of weight in this fish. It's not a monster, but he's not a bad fish. Here he comes, here he comes! It's a little Murray Cod. There we go, folks. My Murray Cod drought has broken. I have been having a terrible run lately. Actually, can you do me a favour and get that camera out of that bag? I might get a photo of myself with it because I'm just about to write my fishing monthly newspaper, my fishing monthly uh, fishing report. For those that don't know, I've been a regular fishing reporter for the Fishing Monthly magazine, Victorian Fishing Monthly, for about the last 12 years, I suppose. I'll be pretty close to it. There we go, folks. Nice little Murray Cod. Around about 40 to 45 centimetres maybe. Caught using chicken's hit for bait. But if you look at this side of his mouth, you'll see there's a hole in the gum there. This fish has been caught before. That is uh, evidence that catch and release works, folks, with fish of all sizes. And Loretta's just going to get a quick photo of me now, then I'll put it back. There we go, folks. Using the chicken's hit for bait, I have managed to break my Murray cod drought. See ya, buddy. Off he goes. I've still got a bit of chicken's hit on the hook. I kid you not, I have had probably, I think I was up to eight fishless trips. In fact, Loretta and I and Brett sat on this bank here last night. Three of us, two rods each for two hours, and we never caught a single cod. They're still here, and I'm excited. <laughs> you beauty. I've never been so excited to catch an undersized cod. After so many fishless trips, it's, uh, it's very refreshing. Chicken's hit for the win. Chicken's hit FTW. So far, the cod to turtle ratio is in our favour. We've caught one more cod than we've caught turtles, and we've only caught one cod. Lately, all we can catch is turtles. It's turtle, turtle, turtle. Sometimes you catch two or three turtles to one cod, and then lately it's just been all turtles and no cod. But you may have seen in my videos lately I've caught a lot of turtles. I reckon I've worked out what's going on. With the drought, when you drive around these river flats down here, a lot of the lagoons and stuff that the turtles live in have dried up. I reckon the turtles have walked out of the lagoons and into the river to find water. And that's why I reckon there is an abnormally high number of turtles in the water this year than what there usually is. I just think that their normal habitat is dry, so they've moved into the river looking for water. When we get some floods and, and the lagoons fill back up, they may very well move back out of the river and back into their, their happy places, the lagoons. That's my theory, got him! 
broke another one. Two, two, God, the drought has broken in a big way. The drought has broken in a big way. Did you see that? He went bang and he's only about 30 centimeters long, but what a savage bite. He's not even that. Look at the size of him. He is tiny. There you go, folks. That's what all the excitement was about. A Murray cod, he's even got green slime on his tail. There's a lot of green slime in the river at the moment, which I'm not happy about. Needs a good flush. And he's stolen my bit of chicken's hit. We've got a bit of an issue. We're running low on bait. <laughs> we bought one bag of chicken's hit with us. All right. I don't care if it's only small fakes. I don't care that that's only probably 20, 25 centimeters because that's a Murray cod. And I haven't caught one for probably a month. And tonight I've caught not one, but TQ2 for 22 Murray Cod in about 15 minutes. I'm so excited. Can you tell? Rightio, chicken shit. Now about there. I don't want to go too far because there's a lot of snags along that bank that we can't see. They're under the water. I know they're there from experience because I've fished here a lot over the last 40 years. I've got to tell you a funny story. Last night I came down here fishing with Brett and Loretta. He didn't catch any cod. Brett sat there where Loretta is. Loretta sat here and I was over the other side of that tree. Brett lost a couple of fish there on the way down. I said, I might fish where Brett was fishing. And Loretta says, oh, that's where I was going to fish. I said, all right, well, you fish there and I'll fish where you were fishing. So Loretta, he's fishing where I wanted to fish. And I caught two fish in the spot that neither of us wanted to go to. And now she's regretting it. She'll be wanting to swap spots again soon. If you go out in the rain, don't go out in that pouring rain. Got him. Lost him. There was a little bit of there was a little bit of weight there. I reckon I might have had a it could have been a turtle. It wasn't a very hard bite. It just pulled down really slow, so I picked it up and struck. And I felt a little bit of weight for a little bit of time. And then he said, nah, I'm letting go. I reckon I just had a near turtle experience, you know. Got him. It's a turtle. First turtle of the night. He's going to zigzagging lines up and look. Here's my pliers. Still no bites down in the spot that I wanted to fish? No. no. Alright. Well, the bad news is I've caught another turtle. Hang on, buddy, wait. They're so hard to unhook because they just do not sit still. My God. Got it. Ah, missed. Bloody pliers come open. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Mate, 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 mate. Come on. Ah! Oh, I grabbed the wrong spot and snapped the hook. No, oh, you idiot. I grabbed the wrong part. I hit it with this little scissors part of the back of the pliers and I cut the hook off. Sorry, mate. Well, the good news, folks, he's only hooked in the lip. He's only, it was, I was a bee's dick away from unhooking that turtle when a mishap happened and I cut through my fishing line with that, uh, with the wire cutters on the pliers. But because it's so loose to the edge, he will easily dislodge that in no time. He'll go and rub his head on whatever he can rub it on. Probably the stomach of a 95 centimeter cod that's not taken my bait, and that hook will fall out in no time. The good news is we've still caught more cod than turtles. We, we've still caught more cod than turtles. No way, it's all about the team. We're down to our second last piece of chicken's hit. The last piece is just there in the bag. One good thing about this chicken's hit is that it takes a long time for the shrimp to skin you. When you're using worms for bait, if you're not careful, the shrimp will, uh, the shrimp will nibble your lines for a bit and then before long it'll stop because they've taken all your worms. When you're using a big bit of chicken, it takes them a long, long time you are not going to believe this little bit of a story that I've got for you. 
after that turtle mishap and I broke the line or whatever, I went and rigged back up. And because I'm running low on bait, I sighted something white in the water over there. And I said, is it a bit of chicken's hit? If it is, I'll get it out and sit it on the bank and we can use it as a last resort later. So I went over, I pulled it out and it's got a hook in it. That's the hook. I told you it wouldn't take that turtle very long to get that hook out, didn't I? <laughs> it must have came out at the same time the turtle swam off. I knew it was only on the edge of the lip. There we go. Not only have we got the... Uh, not only have we got an extra bit of fishing bait, even though it's old and lost a lot of its scent, we've got our hook back too, and the turtles, happy as ten turtles. Rightio folks, the cod drought has broken. Chicken's hit is the bomb. Now, I could get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure, I know you can get it at Adventure Camping and Fishing Complete Angler in Wangaratta. I'm pretty sure you can get it at Mason's Complete Angler in Lavington, and also Rod Coburn's Complete Angler up in Wagga. I'm not sure who else stocks it. But anyway, folks, thanks very much for watching. Chicken's Hit Works. I've broken the cod drought. If you've liked this video, want to give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, and I'll see you in my next adventure.